بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه كولي اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today, inshallah, we will talk about a very important matter. This matter is important to everyone, to the kids, to the adults, to, to the young, to the male, to the female, to the rich, to the poor. It's related to everyone. And somehow everyone is, or most of us, are complaining a loss of this matter. And this matter is about happiness. What really happiness is and how are we going to achieve happiness? What is real happiness? And inshallah, before I start, I would like to remind myself and you all that this topic or any topic which I try to choose with the help of the brothers or the teachers is something which is very important for myself first and then to everyone. So everyone, uh, everything which we'll be discussing today will be a reminder for myself first and then to you all because we are not going to learn something which is uh, uh, very new to us. It is something which is common, but somehow we all need reminders because these reminders do change our lives. And I ask Allah that whatever I say, uh, I try myself and to you all, that we try to implement in our life so we can change our lives. So this matter of happiness, I have divided it into two parts. First is that we will see that what the happiness people think or people try to achieve happiness through. And then the other part is what real or true happiness is and what are some of the ways we, which we can implement in our life to achieve that happiness, inshallah. So first thing is that many people today, they are experiencing loss of happiness. And if we are not wrong, especially after this corona, the, this, this thing which came, after that, many people like, uh, if, if I talk about myself, most of the people I meet, they are sad, they are depressed, and uh, they don't know which way to go. And these people do include the rich, the poor, the old, the young. All of these categories, they are mostly complaining about the real happiness, because they are not able to achieve it. That means that they are running after or they are looking for something which is not in that thing. So that's what we need to find out today. Where is the real happiness is? So there are a number of ways which people think that the happiness is involved in these things. So they try to achieve these things. Number one is wealth. It's wealth. Many people, many people including the Muslims, they think that the success or happiness is measured with how much wealth you have. If you are wealthy, you are the most happy person or the most successful person in this world, which is completely wrong, which is completely wrong. Why? Because if we practically look at the people who are rich, they are not happy. Most of the people, you, you, you see them, you think that they are happy and they are lucky. They got Mercedes, they got BM, they got all of these lavish things, but they are not happy. One time, I was in Ireland, one person, he, he said like, I am suffering, uh, I am depressed, I am going through uh, difficulties, 
and I need some consultation on that. I want to discuss something with you. I said, okay, fine, come at night. After nine, I'm, I'm free. So you will not believe he came on a brand new BMW. Brand new. And not a normal one, like something like six series or something, which is really expensive. And I saw his car, I was sitting with him, and the moment I, I sat in his car and he was like, I am going through real tough time. And I was looking at his car and his face and I was thinking, subhanallah. Sometimes we, we see these cars going on the street, we think that these people are the most happy people. They got everything, they got everything. But that's not reality. The wealth will not give us happiness. And because of this achieving the wealth, unfortunately, our whole life, our whole life is structured in that way. And because of the greediness of becoming rich or earning money, many people, they forget about halal or haram. They just want to achieve it. They just want to achieve it. They don't care halal, haram or anything. Because, because why? Why? If you will even ask them, they will say, because I want to be happy. I can have such car, I can have such bangalows, so I'll be happy. But they don't achieve happiness. And many among, among these rich people, which practically we have noticed, that they got everything, but they are not able to even sleep at night. There is one, one, one guy, he's... One of the, he's coming in the top list in Kuwait, rich. He himself, he himself said, even after taking the tablets, I am not able to sleep. But when in the morning he's outside, everyone can see like his house, big house. He's not happy. He's depressed. But in front of the people, we think, we think that this guy is happy. Because he's rich. And this problem of becoming wealthy is taking the people towards the hellfire as well. May Allah protect us all. Because the parents, if you look at the parent side, the parents are not well educated in a way that they don't know where the real happiness is coming from. They are not able to teach their kids these things as well. Because the parents are running after the money and that's what they are creating or that's what they are feeding their kids as well towards. Means when the, when, when the kid, when he's, he's born, he's going to the school, the parents, they have all focus, all focus that either he will be a biggest, like he's be a businessman or he will be working in the top firms. Okay, that's all what they are working on them for. School, tuition, school, tuitions. Islam is like sometime going to the prayer. Exams are there, no need of fasting, no need of praying, no one is able to, no one will be waking you up for, for Fajr because they are creating you for what? So you, my son, my daughter can be rich, can be rich one day. If we were not able to achieve that, if we were not able to be, become rich, but I'm going to work very hard on my kids so they will become rich, so they will be, become happy as well. But that's not truth. That's not truth. And because of this, this, this sad reality, many of the parents, even if they want to send their kids to the madrasa, they are not sending them there. Why? Because, they're th the, because they are thinking that if my son will go to the madrasa, if my son will go to and do the haves or study about Islam, from where he will earn money? Because, because of this thing. They don't send their kids to that because they, they don't see any wealth coming out of this madrasa, out of this uh, alim. If my son will become alim, okay, fine, he will be graduated from the Medina University, but what after that? Will he get the job? Will he get the money? From where he will get the money from? The graduate of Medina University, they are just earning from, they become imam, and in our countries, the imam is just earning 15k or 20, 20k, and that's it. So this... Uh, what I'm trying to say is, they are looking in the future, but with the eyes of money. That's it. Which is completely wrong. The Imam of the Masjid, who is earning 10K or 20K, is like he is much happier than anyone who is maybe earning 
one million as well. I will tell you, like, one guy I met in Medina this Ramadan, he came there for Ithikaf. And he said, like, maybe, like, 10 years, 10 years or so, like, it took him to, you know, save this money so he can come for the Umrah. So he can come for the Umrah and he can, like, do the Ithikaf as well. And I would tell you, like, he came here with, like, big amount of money. And he was not having the hotel as well because he was not able to afford that in the package. So he came there with just the flight ticket, return flight ticket, and that's it. I met him and I asked him, what do you do? And he said, I am an imam in one of the masjid. He was from Pakistan. From his face, you can see the light coming. How happy he was. He, he was so happy to tell me that I am an imam in the masjid. And he said, like, part time, I also teach in the madrasa. You know the Imam, he's the Imam Fajr, then you have time till Zohar. So he is the, he's also a teacher in the Madrasa. So I asked him, how much, how much do you earn? So he said, I earn 20k, 20,000 rupees. You know 20,000 rupees for Pakistan, how much is it? It's 20 KD. He's earning 20 KD, but he was very happy. He was very happy and, and he told me that, you know, he told me that. He said 4,000 rupees is only for my floor, you know, the atta, 4,000 oh, is only for that. And he's, he's, he's so sad, like when we have 1,000 KD in our pocket and we're very sad. Today I was not able to eat McDonald's, you know, we're very sad. So he said he was very happy and he was telling me that 4,000 is just the floor. And then I'm married as well. And at the end, you know what he said? Alhamdulillah, still I'm very happy. He said that to me. I was like, Subhanallah. He's earning 20 KD a month and he is so happy and he's telling me that. He is telling me I'm happy. And if we just look at our situation, we are living in a country where we have all kind of comfort. Okay, maybe here, maybe for, for 100 fields, we can eat much more than what people they cannot eat with, with this amount of money in our country. And we are earning what they are earning, maybe in like two years or three years they're earning. We are earning in that in, in a month. But we are still very sad. We have the car. We have the car, we have the air condition, we have all kind of comfort here. But those people, they have nothing. But why they are happy? Is it the money? Is it the money? They don't have money. And where the, someone is having the money, he's not happy. That means... The wealth is having nothing to do with the happiness or even with the success as well. Because we should know of a hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah gives, this is, I am telling you from the hadith, not exact the hadith, okay? Allah gives wealth to those whom he loves and those whom he does not love. Mean the kufar? You see the kufars are the richest people in this world, are the kufars, okay? Do, you, do we think Allah, Allah loves them? No, Allah doesn't love them. Allah does not love anyone who is associating any partner with Him. Okay? No matter he's doing whatever charity work he's doing, no matter he's having whatever kind of best human right organizations, okay? millions he's giving for the charity, for the orphans, Allah does not love him because he is associating the partner with Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives iman to only whom Allah loves. So, if anyone is rich, don't see them as a successful people. And this is for the kids as well. You know, kids now, they, they have the YouTube. They have the YouTube, which is the biggest fitna. We need, to, we need to know about these things because we are getting ready for the fitnas which are coming. It's for our kids. If you're not going to stop them now, if you're not going to teach them Islam now, Things are going to be worst in the coming 5-10 years, as they are now as well. If you look back 10 years back, things weren't like that. So these kids, you know, some of the kids, you know, I, you know, I was teaching summer course there. So the kids, they were talking about uh, someone who is, uh, you know, having the billion subscriber on YouTube. And they were so amazed, you know, they were talking about him. That this guy, oh man, he's doing that, he's got millions, billions. How, like, why? Because, you know, this is the, parent, the fault of the parents. Because the parents are not stopping them. The parents are not telling them that these people, they are not successful. They are not going to get, go anywhere if they're going to die like that. 
they are thinking that these people are our role model because this is this is the life this is the generation of the media now so we have to tell our kids they are not our role models these million subscriber billion subscriber are not going to take them anywhere we need to teach our kids that even it's one view is no problem if you're doing it for the sake of Allah we need to teach our kids that this word is of no value but for that, we need to know that, that this word is of no value. So this is one, one type of people who think happiness is, has, is attached to the wealth, which practically we have experienced, and many people have experienced, this is not truth. At all, this is not truth. At all. If it has one person of reality, of wealthy people being, or wealth has anything to do with the happiness, then maybe Allah would not have given to any of the kuffar. But it's not like that. There's, there are other type of people who think that happiness is attached with traveling. You know, when we say happiness, happiness means like you are satisfied with the things. You are satisfied with what you have from your deep in your heart. Your soul is happy. That's your happiness. Maybe some people are thinking, oh, how, how can you say the wealthy people are not happy? They can buy whatever they want to buy. They can go wherever they want to go. Yes, what after that? As I mentioned to you, someone sitting in the rose rice even, he's not happy with his life. They are trying. This is, this is, this is what they are doing. They're spending on millions and millions, buying million dollar watches. They're trying to tell their, their soul that I am trying to make you happy. They're spending all of this money just to make them happy. So this is one kind of people who love traveling and who think, who think that by traveling, I'm going to achieve happiness. I'm going to ha achieve happiness. But they go to the countries, they go to the countries where they think this, th this thing is going to make me happy so they try to achieve that thing. They travel all around the world. They travel all around the world, but they don't achieve happiness. They don't achieve happiness. Ten days trips, trip in maybe like in one of the most beautiful country, okay, which they think is most beautiful country. The moment the trip is ended, they are sad. They don't want to come back. They are super sad. And they are coming back to the work, sad depressed, working hard again for the next holidays. That's how their life is going on. They are just trying to satisfy their soul, They're just trying to satisfy their desires and trying to achieve happiness. That's it. Nothing. They're not doing anything more than that. And I'm not talking about the Kufars. I'm talking about the Muslims as well. There are some Muslim brothers, may Allah guide them and us all. You know, they are you know, trying to save thousands of KD, thousands of KD, just to go and visit some country for a week or so. That's it. They are doing that. And you know why it's very sad? Because they haven't done Umrah, they haven't done Hajj, okay? But they want to save money for the trip to the Europe. Because they think the happiness is there. They think the happiness is there. But if, if, we, if we look about the Hajj and the Umrah, those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this blessing that they know what you can achieve there, they're going to spend all of their money to go there. Like that person who was earning 20K just to be there after 10 years, 10 years of saving just to be in the Makkah to make Umrah, subhanAllah. And there are people who haven't done Hajj, they are, they are having the money and everything. But in order to satisfy themselves, they are going and moving all around the world. This is the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives iman to those whom he loves. Allah gives the tawfiq to those who want it. Those who love it. Those who love the deen. Allah will give them the tawfiq. So this was one, one time of person who tried to satisfy or try to be happy with, while traveling. Okay, there is one other type of people is that there are people who are super sad and they think they think that happiness is just an illusion there is there is nothing 
There is nothing being called happiness. This is this type of people as well. They have suffered so much in their life, and 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 this thing especially happened to the kufars, and who are turning as the mulhid as well. They think there is nothing except difficulties in this life. And yes, this is true. This is very true. That this there is nothing in this life for the moment, except the difficulties. This is true. But in order to come to that situation, you have to be the moment. You have to have the sabr as well. You have to know that this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you about this dunya. It is a prison for the believers. And it is a place of enjoyment for the non-believers. You have to come to that level. But no, these people are not at that level. They are not even moment. They, they think this life is... And, and to be very honest, these people are there. You know, these people, they think like, I do whatever I want to do. I'm not going to be satisfied. The God, Nauzubillah, the God no, will not be satisfied. So I do whatever I, I do. Okay, fine, in the morning I'm happy, evening I'm not happy, no problem. There is, there is nothing in reality happiness, which is wrong. There is happiness. There is happiness. We'll, to, we'll come to that. Where is happiness? There's one other category, and uh, obviously this describing the true happiness is a very vast topic. But inshallah, within like half an hour, 40 minutes, we'll try to cover whatever we can try. Okay? Try that we, we, we try a little. So maybe we can try to achieve the real happiness with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's one category where the people, they think, these, these people are those people who pray, those people who read the Quran as well, they're fasting as well, but still they're not happy. But still they are not happy. Who are these people? This, these people are really, really like people who may, maybe we know them as well. Okay? Maybe it's us. If you look, it's, it's us. B, it's me. Or it's people you are sitting here. We are praying as well. We are reading the Quran. We are trying to attend the halakas as well. But still we are not happy. But still we are not happy. Why? There is, there is one thin line between them. There is one thin line. Is that because we are not satisfied with the decree of Allah. We are praying. We are doing whatever the um, things we have to do. We try, we try our best. But at the same time, at the same time, we look for the people who are rich. We look for the people who are traveling. We see them and we think that they are successful. And then we think to ourselves, I am praying five times. I am reading the Quran. I am trying to memorize the Quran as well. I am Hafiz as well. But still, like, why do they have everything and I'm not having anything? So what is happening here? You are comparing and you are not satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And because of that, you are not happy. Because of that, you are not happy. You are complaining all the time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are not being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because of that being unthankfulness, because if you are thankful, Allah will give you more. If you are unthankful... Then this is a condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take what blessing He has given you as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the blessing of the Quran. You are a Hafiz. But you are not content with it. You are not satisfied with it. You want the dunya, dunya. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away the happiness from you. Because the happiness is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are not happy with Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, which is going to benefit you in this dunya and hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take from your heart. You will not feel, you will not feel that how special you are. And this is one type of, one, one category. And these people, these people, many, many of these people are what we are generating in nowadays, you know. How? The parents, they are sending their kids to the madrasa, the masjid. Here we have the mas masajid. Parents, they are sending their kids to the masajid to, so my kids, they can memorize the Quran, right? So my kids, they can memorize the Quran. I haven't memorized the Quran, so my kid going to memorize the Quran. So they take it off from the school at, uh, at the age of 9, 10, or grade 5. Two years gap, two years gap, they put, they, they take out the kids from the school and put them in the madrasa. And after two years, they go the stamp of Hafiz, okay? And then again, 
um, the kids will be removed from the masajid and will be thrown in the school. What's happening in that? No, the kids, they are thinking that I started with something very important and there was something which I had to do, I had to do the memorization of the Quran, which the parents, they don't know the benefit of it, okay? And the parents, they never told the kids why you have to memorize, other than that, that you will be Hafiz. In the class, you will be Hafiz alone. Like, what's like, whoa, what the half is going to do? So the kids, they know that, okay, fine, two years, I have to try my best and just to please my father, I have to uh, become Hafiz. Okay, end of the, end of the day, my, uh, my relatives going to come back come, and they're going to praise my father, praise my father, praise my father. Okay, this kid, Miskin, is sitting there who worked for two years, but the relatives are praising the father who was never there even. The, mother's, the mother was doing everything. But then the kids are going back to the school and the, what the kids are thinking is that there was something which I had to do it for my father and now I'm back to the real thing, which is, which is school. And the, the kid, he don't know the value of the Quran. And because of that, because of that, if you will look at the ratio of the uh, hufas which are being coming like in Kuwait, I'm just talking about Kuwait, okay? Or I will be more specific to the place, city where I, I was living, okay? I'll not mention the name. So those, you know it, okay? So from there, okay? I know, like there were like 50, 100 of kids, they were memorizing the Quran. Where are they now? Where are they now? No beard, roaming in the malls, okay? Thinking about the dunya, heavy bikes, if they have money, okay? That's it. Maybe out of all of them, maybe one, one, maybe one person he is pursuing the... Uh, studies, Islamic studies. Why? Because all of others, the parents, they, they even don't know the value of it. The kids, they don't know the value of it. And they were just doing it. They were just doing it. So when you will, you know, not know the value, you will not tell the, the kids the value, you will not get anything out of it. And many of these students, they, know, they don't know the Quran now. Many of my friends, many of my friends, they used to study there. And literally, after 10 years, 15 years, now we all, we, we all forgot that he, he's Hafiz. And we were surprised, really? You were Hafiz? Like, you were Hafiz, you know, because they don't know the Quran anymore. So this is what's happening. This is what's happening. Because we are not telling the kids that how happy you will be with the Quran. How happy you will be when you will study Islam. Because we never tried it. We never tried this real happiness. So how are we going to give it to our kids as well? So these type of kids who focus is dunya, when they even try to achieve something from the deen, they don't care about it and then they just think about the dunya. They just think about the dunya. And this category of who are running after the dunya, thinking about traveling, everything is the dunya, 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 okay, worldly life, worldly gains, for them, for them, even they try, try hard to get the dunya, they will still not get it. Why? I'll tell you hadith, which is very important hadith, and everyone should know this hadith. Very important hadith. And this is a clear, telling us about our life, how we have to live our life. If you want to be happy, you should know this hadith. And our ustad used to tell us that this hadith, copy this hadith and paste it in your, in your walls at your home. So it will keep you on the track. It will tell you where the dunya means the value of this dunya. And if you will be running after dunya, what are you going to achieve? So the hadith, very important hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever makes the worldly life his major concern. Very important. Just look at how beautiful the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us about this. Whoever makes the worldly life his major concern, then what will happen? Number one, then Allah will scatter his situation for him. That is... It will make things difficult for him. Number one, whoever concern is dunya, Allah will scatter his things. You will look at the people who are rich or who are just, just focused on this dunya, okay? Morning, evening, at night, they are just working, working, working. At night, they're not sleeping on the phone, emails from this country, that country. So they are, like, their things are scattered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not giving them any kind of peace because... They are just worried about, about this dunya. So Allah has scattered their things, made their things difficult. And I know, wallahi I know, 
very small thing, very small thing. These people, if they go, they have to run through 10 people and they have to achieve that thing. This is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them, made it difficult for them. Okay, the second thing, his poverty will be placed between his eyes. And that's what, that, what we see, a person is very, very rich. Okay, maybe small amount of loss, he's not able to bear that. He's not able to bear that. He's having uh, maybe like 10 businesses. One business, small loss, khalas, heart attack, gone. Okay. So this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, kept poverty in front of his eyes all the time. He's just thinking, maybe I'm going I'm, I'm to be poor because of that. He's always worried about money. Always worried about money. This is the second thing which happened to one who is just worried about dunya. He does not get, okay, this is the third thing. He does not get from this word anything. He does not get anything from this word except that which has been decreed for him. He will not get maybe one inch extra thing other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed for him. Subhanallah. Amazing. Okay, now, not only that, the Prophet ﷺ has continued and has explained that the person who, who's concerned are not for this dunya. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, whoever makes the hereafter his intention, whoever makes the hereafter his intention, then number one, his situation will be gathered. And that situation was scattered. For him, the situation will be gathered. That is, Allah will make things easy for him. Easy for him. That what you will see, the people who are attached to the deen, they're the student of knowledge. The people who are seeking knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in their time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for them. And that they just go and do things. This is help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people, they, they by themselves, the, the worldly people, I have listened by themselves. They said, for them, you know, these Molvis, for them things happen. You know, they are telling by themselves, you know. For them things happen. Allah is making it happen. Allah makes things easy for them. So this is the first thing that Allah makes things easy for him, who, whose concern is hereafter. And his wealth will not be placed in his heart. His wealth will not be placed in his heart. This is what we need. Even if you are wealthy, even the, the companions were rich as well. But what was there? The wealth was not in their heart. This is the benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you if your concern will be hereafter. Allah will give you what? Contentment with what you have. And this, this is what is happening with the people of the madrasa. Those people who think where they, they, where, where they are going to earn from, these people, they don't care about the money. They are happy with 20K. They are happy with that. Because even, even the laws as well. They know the deen. They know the deen. So there is no loss of dunya for them. Why? I will come to the hadith after that. And the worldly life will come to him anyways. The worldly life will come to him anyways. Allahu Akbar. Look at the comparison. The worldly life, your concern is dunya, dunya, dunya. Allah will scatter your things. Your concern is akhirah. Hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for you. Worldly life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put poverty in front of you. Even a minor loss is a big loss for you. The one who is worried about Akhirah, even a big loss, he's saying Alhamdulillah. You know this from Allah. Third thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not get anything more than what he's decreed. And the one who is worried about Akhirah, even though if you don't need it, the dunya will come to him. That's what we see. The Imam, the people, they are not even earning anything just because of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessing them with everything. This is where the dunya is coming to them. They don't want to run after the dunya. They are just working for akhirah and the dunya is coming to them. So this hadith is very important for those who have this question in the mind that I am praying, I am trying to do everything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, but still why the difficulties, problems, depressions, these old things, why I am facing? 
this question is there this question is there to the muslims now the youngsters now and even to some of the kids now the answer to this question the answer to this question is i'll tell you hadith in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said amazing is the affair of the believer allahu akbar amazing is the affair of the believer for his affair are all good all affairs are good if anything good happens to him he is thankful for it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you wealth alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the children alhamdulillah for all the blessings you're saying alhamdulillah you're thanking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay and this the next part is for us even even this was for us but the next part is very important okay this is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving it but now so that if something bad happens to him then that is good for him as well this is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us even something bad happening to you is good for you and this applies to no one but the believers even something bad is happening to you you have to be patient like the difficulty it's it's not that you have said la ilaha illallah and you have become the pious person and you started coming to the halakas you are practicing muslim or muslima or you are seeking the knowledge in khalas you are on a plane to the jannah no the difficulty is going to be there and those whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test them and the prophets they were tested the most the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his life do you think his life was easy don't we know the seera how difficult his life was was he worried about the dunya was he worried about the wealth wasn't wealth placed in front of him but he didn't want it that he is his life was difficult difficult life day and life difficult everything was difficult the kufars the 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 wars the everything the family outside everything was difficult for him who are we so we should know as a muslim wallahi this thing is happening as soon as you start practicing islam your life was happy you were enjoying everything was there as soon as you started growing the beard as soon as you started wearing the niqab things are difficult and you should be ready for it things are going to be difficult for you and you should know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you that how much iman you have how much sabr you have or khalas if you are there are many people they are they fail you know there are many people they fail one one brother i met him he was having the beard when he was uk he was in uk he was having the beard he was here no beard i asked him man what's wrong man you were having the beard so you know what he said he said like i uh, 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 my company he wanted to send me to the uae so they asked me for the visa for the picture i gave him the uh, my picture and he said ah oh, shunu hada this picture you will not get the visa so he shaved for uae allahu akbar he shaved for uae this is the test allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you you will not find jobs you will find difficulties you you will you will have big loss in your businesses you will not find jobs the sisters are not going to able to find the jobs with the niqab there are sisters how many sisters we know of in this in this country we know of the sisters they said remove the niqab and we'll give you the good salary and remove the niqab and come and teach the teachers this the 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 female you have to teach the female you have to teach the sisters and you are saying remove the niqab why remove the niqab why why to shave the beard allahu akbar these are the test when you start practicing islam you have to be ready for these test the life will not going to be easy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you as per your iman if you see anyone not struggling don't think that he is happy don't think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he loves him that's why allah is not testing no on the day of judgment you know the people they going to be biting and they're saying we wish that our life was full of struggle why because there because of the struggle the pains there they are getting the level in the jannah and those people who are struggling who are struggling by thinking that they are not happy with the deen with the deen they should know of these ahadith they should know of the hadith in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said on the day of qiyama allahu akbar allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, will bring a person who who had suffered from the first day until the end 
difficulties. His life, the mu'min, his life was full of difficulties. All kind of difficulties we cannot even think of, he was in that difficulty. He will be brought on the day of judgment. Remember that we are not for this dunya. We are, we are working, struggling for akhirah. This person, he will be brought and he will be dipped. He will be dipped just one, one time, dipped in the Jannah. Just one dip in Jannah. And will be asked about it. And he said, like, it's like I have never felt any kind of difficulties. Never, just one dip. Imagine going to the Jannah forever. Allahu Akbar. And the other person who got all kind of luxury in this, this world. That kafir. All kind of luxuries. Richest men in the world. These, these man jets, these, all of these things, whatever, is happy, billions. This person will be brought on the day of judgment, one dip in the hellfire. He will forget everything. It will be like never he have achieved anything. No luxury, no, no peace at all. So don't worry about the difficulties. So where is the true happiness? Where is the true happiness? How can we achieve that level that even the difficulties are there? All kind of rains of difficulties are on us, but still we are happy. That will come with Islam. That will come with the taqwa. When you will have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you will be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. When you will have the knowledge of Islam. When you will have the knowledge of the Quran, that's where the true happiness will be. If you don't believe that, just, just go and visit the student of the Medina University. Just visit, go and visit them. I can make uh, arrangement for you. Visit them. Wallahi, most of the students there and in Umm al as well, okay, these universities there, okay, I don't know about others, they are coming from the most, you know, poor background where their parents used to earn like the Imam, like the Imam, 20, 30, that's it. But their parents, they were in that field. They knew how happy they are. They knew that maybe one time we're going to eat in the day, but they know this Islam is giving that, that taste, the sweetness of Iman is coming. From this knowledge. So they are making their kids ready for it. They have no money. Wallahi, they have no money. But they are sending their kids to the Medina University. Why? Why do you think many, many of them are going to the Medina University? Apart from the fact that obviously it's Medina, the best, best, best place. There's other story as well. Because they cannot, they cannot afford sending them to anywhere other than Medina. Why? Because the Medina is giving them the ticket, the hostel, the pocket money, everything. And you know, mid, mid the bus, by the mid of the month, the pocket money with the government or the university is giving them, it's gone. But you will not see them sad. You will not see them sad. They're happy. And they want to die there. They don't want to go back there. You know what are their worries? They don't have money. If, if they say they don't have money, only for the sake that they are sad that they cannot buy the books. That's it. They don't care about anything. Anything. Money is not their deal. They know that after six years, I'm going to go back to my country and I'm not going to be a rich man. And they don't want to be rich. They know that the richness is the amount of knowledge they will gain. The amount of knowledge the person will seek, they, he will have, that's how he will have the satisfaction in this life. And as I said, Difficulties will be there. They are in the Medina University, they have difficulties. Outside the Medina University, they have difficulties. The more difficulties you have. You know, like one, one, uh, one person, he asked, asked his stud, like, how, how do we judge? It's, is it a test or is it a, it means like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing or it's because of our sins? You know? You know, when difficulties are coming, you should remember that the sins are going. The sins are going. You have fever, the sins are going. You have difficulties. You are depressed, obviously for, for the good sake. You are depressed, you are thinking. The sins are going, okay? So this is not a problem. So the, so the person asks, like, how can we know that if it's a test or it's something from our sin? So the Ustad, the Sheikh said, if it's on you, then you should always think it's because of your sin. 
always think that difficulties are coming because of my sin. But if it's, if it's on others, don't think that. Don't tell him that. If because of your sin, Allah is testing you, you know? Because of your sin, your sin, you are in hospital now. No, no, no. Ustad said, the Sheikh said, for others, always think it's a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is testing his iman. For yourself, it's a sin. You are a sinner. You should know it. You should know that you've done the sins. Others, it's the test. May Allah protect us all. So, the real happiness will come from the Iman. From the Iman, from the Islam, the knowledge of Islam. Okay? Because, because what will happen is, this knowledge will give you the, will give you the way. Even if you are in difficulties, you, even if you don't have the money, if you, if, even if you don't have anything, the family, even you don't have the family, okay? This knowledge will tell you how you have to react in, in certain situations. That's how you have to react with patience. And you should know that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a few days back, I met a sheikh. Somebody asked a question that there's a family, he's suffering. Um, he's suffering. The, the father is not having the job. Uh, they're not able to find the rishta for the daughter. I mean, all kind of difficulties. Every day, every day something's happening. The accident is there, the everything, the hospital and these all things are there. Means pain, 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 suffering. And he said like this family, they are trying to say astaghfar as well. They are trying to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well what they, what they should do now. Okay? You know, like if you have the knowledge of, of the in Islam, Okay, you, you will know about these things. You will know, like, even if I'm asking for, for years, the prophets, they asked for how many years? Okay, after how many years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them. They were prophets. Who are we? Who are we? Missing the prayers, not praying on time, lazy in prayers, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for nothing. Okay, who are we to even complain for a second from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the, the sheikh, he said, they are praying, they are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are doing the istaghfar. Still, the difficulties are there, then they should know. They should know that this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be patient. Be, be patient until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them something. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change their situation. So, it, this is happening to many of the people now. That uh, even after all kind of fries, all kind of... Uh, uh, you know, wazifa means they, they are doing lots of astaghfar, still the situation is not changing. They should know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will change it, inshallah. Allah will change it. And this is what, what the Prophet has taught us for the dua as well. Means don't rush in that. I mean, don't, don't say, don't complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't say that my duas are not being accepted. The moment you say that, khalas, you are, that's what we are thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, difficulties you are going to get out of it, okay? And even if you don't get out of, out of it, because of the knowledge of Islam, you will know that this dunya was meant to be like that. Two days back, there was a person who was suffering, and there were things, Wallahi, he, he didn't say a word of being unthankful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A word, a word. His life was full of suffer, full of suffering. And you know at the end what he said? He said, Salman, this is dunya. This is dunya. What do we expect from this dunya? And that's how the aslaf, you know, they used to, to each other. They, how they used to comfort, give comfort to each other. That only few days are left. Only few days are left. Then we are going to go to the Jannah. That's what the, how the moment is. We all should know that this dunya was not created for us. This dunya was not created for us to enjoy. Our life is the hereafter. And that's what happened to the person who has the knowledge of Islam. He worked hard and hard and hard for Islam, for seeking knowledge, for implementing, for teaching, because he know that this deen is going to give him happiness now, now, and as well. He knows it from the Quran about how his soul will be taken out. He knows that because he's a believer, mu'min, because he did, he, he spent his life as per the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me a beautiful ending as well. He knows how his soul will be going up with perfumed and angels will be asking who this person is. He knows that because of this Islam, when I will be in the grave, day and night, my place in the Jannah 
will be showed to me. He knows it. He knows the value of the deen. And that's what we need to know. That's what we need to tell our difficulties. That I am getting ready for the Jannah. I am getting ready for the Akhirah. A place which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me with his mercy, with his rahmah. A place will be, where there will be no difficulties. And many times the scholars, they say that. You want all kind of uh, happiness and a whole kind of, you know, peaceful life. This, what was Jannah created for then? Jannah is where there will be no struggle, no worries, no anxiety, no depression. That's what the Jannah is for. So we should all be working for that. And we will not be able to work for that if, you are, if we are not serious on Islam. If we are not creating or our generation on Islam. If we want to achieve the Jannah or the real happiness of this dunya and akhirah, then we have to spend our life as per the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the challenge we have in this now. Now when we, have, when we need a lot of things, that's the challenge. And out of all of these things, now we know that even, even my, my son, if I, if I send him to the Islamic universities, he might not be able to earn anything, but still we send him there for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because we know that even we, if after we die, he will be praying for us. He will be the one who knows about the deen, who knows about the value of the parents even after they, they, they pass away. And then the generation going to come because of your effort on the kids for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us real happiness which is only on Islam, on deen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us implement to whatever we hear now or later with regards to Islam. And I know it's very difficult. It's very difficult thinking that how I'm going to achieve the happiness without money. It's difficult to think. But when, even if you don't have the money, you have the books, Islam, you know the Arabic, you know the, 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 the teaching of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will not need anything. That's what one of the shaykh, he said, there is a Jannah in this dunya as well. And the Jannah of this dunya is ilm, seeking the knowledge. May Allah help us all to seek the knowledge and may Allah help us all to achieve the real happiness which is only attached with pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جزاكم الله خير وأقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته